Now, uh, many of those who will hear you say that mm. will ask, but that many of the current politicians are giving very bad examples. And therefore, for younger ones to attach themselves to many of these people, I don't mean you specifically, no, 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 I'm talking not, generally. Not now. all politicians are bad. Not all, but... Not all. Not as, I wouldn't say a significant number. Okay, but some. Some. You would agree that not some. All. In a, I mean, in every case, there are a few bad apples. You don't let a few bad apples spoil the whole apple in the cart. You would just have to select them and take them out and put the right ones in there. Now, you asked the question rhetorically, which is very important. Mm. Are the youth prepared to wait the period of mentorship to learn the ropes before launching out? I mean, I, I, in the current system that we have, you have 30-year-olds or 35-year-olds who want to run to be president. And when, they talk, when you say, don't you think you should start at some level that is a bit lower yes. and then work your way up? They yeah. point to I, take, I mean, I use myself as an example. I didn't come out of the blues to run for Senate or House of Reps. I went to run for a position in the executive of the political party for me to understand how the political system works, how decisions are made, then the dynamics of my political party. I did that for one term under the CPC, then under the APC. I did that for one year as the interim before I now ventured out to run for Senate. And those years I was in the executive of the political party taught me a lot. I studied our constitutions, I understood our delegate system. I watched all the intricacies and all the power plays so I could understand. So my advice is to the younger ones, try and understudy someone. Twitter is a different ballgame compared to politics out there. there social media versus social reality. Me yes, social media versus reality. A lot of elections are won on social media. But when you come on ground... <laughs> you can't actually get it. You, you can't get it. So that's what they need to understand. Then also to the older ones, open up to the younger ones. We all need each other. What the younger ones know, we might not know with my IT, social media, and all that, is the younger ones that we need to put us through. Then let us also pass that experience that we have to the younger ones. We must leave a legacy. You know, in your, where you're from in, in the southeast? Uh, yes. I want to use... I'm from Obosi, yes, in a number of states. In, number of states. Uh, in the southeast, uh, the APC yes. did not do very well. Yes. In the 2015 election. Yes. In fact, I think uh, only one state with Governor Rochester's approach. Imo, yes. Imo mm -hmm. uh, went APC's way. Yes. Um, now we're going on to 2019. Yes. Regardless of the position you're occupying right now, yes. I know for a fact mm -hmm. that you are playing a role mm -hmm. in ensuring that the APC is firmer on the ground there. Yes. How? And the way I'm playing that role is by excelling in the job had been given by the President Muhammad Buhari to serve the people of Nigeria, most especially the pensioners. You're aware of the ex-policemen uh, who fought, who were yes. on the Biafran side? Yes. yes, they were granted amnesty in year 2000, 17 years after, who paid their pensions and gratuities and the areas. Buhari's government. In election, everything is about branding. Who is at the head of that uh, agency? It's their daughter from Anambra, who incidentally, her grandfather and Louis Edit were mates in the Nigerian police in those days. Yes. So by the time the word of mouth goes wrong, it's all about branding. What have you done for the people to come and ask them for their votes? You go to Alaja, who remember Delta Steel? 2005, they were privatized. I went there in uh, November of uh, 2016, a month after I took over office, because I'd been hearing about Delta Steel. And I remember when Indurama and Co were coming into Nigeria for all that. And over a thousand of these pensioners gathered, old men and women. Some had gone blind. Diabetes, glaucoma, they couldn't afford their drugs. They were crying, I was crying. 
and I made a promise to them. I said, this government will verify you, and this government will be, and it's come to pass. The over 4,000 of the pensioners think of their families that it has affected. So we've affected like 20 times more than that uh, 4,000 number that we have there. These are the tangible things that government should be able to do. It's not government that would talk about it. It's the people themselves that would tell others because they are living examples. Like the Biafran policemen, one of them said to me, my daughter, this is all I was waiting for before I die. Because this is a sign that Nigeria has forgiven us. A lot of people still have scars from that war. That's why we don't realize 40 years after. We still have scars from that war. So these are ways of closing those gaps, redressing all the injustice of the past. We can do that. Government has done a lot. The people themselves will be the ones who would come out to say, please come back. Take NITEL, for instance. That's the next one we're going to do. Over 13,000 are going to be put on the payroll. I told you earlier, monthly uh, payroll for Pitad alone, 7.5 billion. Monthly, times that by 12 every year. Government is bearing this body. Government is paying. But once we have strong institutions in place, things work right. The people themselves will be the ones that will go out on their own to campaign and vote. And they won't ask for any inducement. And they won't vote. accept any possible. They won't accept any inducement to vote. You're a lawyer. Yep. Lawyers are accused of defending anyone, even those, quote-unquote, who are guilty, politically exposed. Yes, why? Because you're innocent until declared guilty. True. So when the client comes to you, you assume the client is innocent. I was actually making reference to the delay tactic. Sometimes the accusation is that they know that the clients are guilty. No, even in the law profession, we have we have our rules, and you have to be ethical in what you do. Morals has a play in everything you do, and ethics as well. Of course, you have a few lawyers who are not ethical, and we have the Bar Association to deal with that. A few lawyers have been debarred. Yes, for unethical practices. Yes, for unethical practices, yeah. Go, looking ahead now, as we try to wind this down, um, mm. What do you see? A lot of people, again, just like in the run-up to 2015, mm -hmm. there were a lot of people who were quite apprehensive. A lot of them couldn't see. In 2015, I was so sure that we were going to win. 2019 now looks different from 2015 to the extent that... It doesn't look, it doesn't look different. No, there are, there are differences in the sense that security is a lot more of a problem now, for example, if we take that. Um, or you don't think so? It's a lot more of the problem because we're not suppressing the news unlike before. Okay, so basically you're saying that security has been a big challenge all along. It's always been, it's always been a big challenge. Are we tackling it right? We are tackling it right. But, it doesn't but, but a, lot, a, lot, a, lot, a lot more could be done. You know, you don't, uh, you can't, uh, what's the word to use now? You can redress a problem that was there. It's not like I'm blaming the past. Government is a continuum. You can't redress uh, a problem of, say, five years in five days. When we say we will do this, we will do it. When you make a commitment, you're building confidence. Then when you now fulfill that commitment, you're building trust. You have built trust. So it's the same thing with this government. Please, we are doing this, and we will do it. We're committed to doing it. Once you see that commitment, the only thing we'll have to do, give them a chance. They will redress all these challenges. And it's not only in Nigeria. You know, We seem to forget what happened in Libya. If you know the North Africa and West Africa route, we're all linked. Movement across the desert. It's free. 
Ireland. So we think that what happens there doesn't affect us here. Of course it does. Of course it does. Let me give you an opportunity to have a final message for those who are watching you now. Mm -hmm. um, particularly uh, aspiring female no, politicians, politicians yeah. those who are already in it, yes. uh, those who are looking at it and thinking, uh, not for me. You talked about more committed people. Yes, people who I are coming about, in for service, not patronage. I also, although I did argue about it then, mm -hmm. talked about decent people, and I know what you mean by decent. Yes. Um, people with a good track record. What will you say to those listening and watching you now about that, especially ahead of 2019? Yeah. If someone like me, as demure and ladylike as I am, can be in politics and survive and make my mark in politics, anyone can. All you need is to have that courage and be passionate about serving your people. If you're coming in for patronage, forget it. If you're coming in for service, that's your staying power. You will make it. Yeah. <laughs> and we are winning 219 elections. Well, I wish you good luck and your party, of course, APC, yes. with the coming elections, as you're so sure you will win. Yes. Thank you very much for speaking with us. Thank you so much. Thank you and God bless Nigeria. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you.